I have a lot of people ask me about how I create the economics videos. The short answer is with a lot of time and patience. No individual step is particularly challenging, but taken as a whole, the process can seem overwhelming. As I outlined in the Basic Steps to Digital Storytelling video, there are five basic steps in turning your story concept into a digital story. One, write a script. Two, storyboard your script. Three, collect multimedia. Four, create. And five, share. Here's what those five steps look like for me. Step one, write a script. I'm actually very old school on this step. I just have a spiral bound notebook in which I write the scripts for my video lessons. Once you've decided on the idea, story, or concept that you want to share, you write a short script. The key here is short. Although my longest video is 12 minutes, most of my videos are three to five minutes in length. Step two, storyboard your script. Would you believe index cards? I use index cards to write out the script again, but this time I add quick ideas for images to tell the story. Storyboarding doesn't necessarily require a lot of artistry. It just means that you have some idea what kind of image you want to convey each point in your story. You can see from this storyboard that I'm not out to create any artistic masterpieces here. I just want to build a series of images that follow the sequence of the story that I want to tell. Step three, collect multimedia. First, let's look at the visual. Most of the images that I use in my videos are my own artwork. After storyboarding, I create all of the drawings on blank five by eight index cards based on the image ideas from the storyboard. Once I have all the drawings completed, I'm able to run the entire stack of cards through a receipt scanner in just a few minutes. It needs to be a scanner that will give decent resolution, so this is one place you may have to spend money if you go this route. In some of my videos, you'll occasionally see photos as well as drawings. To avoid copyright issues, I either use my own photos or I make sure that the images are Creative Commons licensed, attribution only. That way I can edit the images and integrate them into the video without violating a license that stipulates no changes can be made. And then I make sure that I give attribution at the end of the video. What about the audio? I read my script for the video using Audacity, a free audio recording and editing software. Because Audacity allows you to edit, if you flub a line, you can just pause Collect your thoughts and pick up where you left off, editing out the bad parts later. Don't obsess, though, the occasional flaw makes the narrative more natural. I've tried a variety of recording methods with varying levels of success in terms of audio quality. A handheld digital recorder with a built-in USB to load the files onto your computer is very handy and fairly inexpensive to get started. But eventually I was doing so much recording that I got fancier. I now have an Audio-Technica AT2020 USB microphone, about $100 on Amazon last time I checked. There are quite a few decent USB microphones out there for $100 or less, and of course there are plenty that cost more if you want to invest the money. But my first AT2020 was a gift from my husband, because in our household nothing says I love you like new technology. I used the first microphone so much that I ended up buying a second one so that I could keep one in my office at home and one in my office at work. Step four, create. For the first few years that I was creating videos, I had a PC and I was perfectly happy with Windows Movie Maker available for free with the PC. The product eventually changed to Movie Maker Live, still free and available online for download. And while they took away one or two features that I do miss, it was still fine. Eventually, though, I switched to a Mac. Those of you who've looked at uh, my iBooks, I needed to switch to the Mac because I started using the iBooks authoring software, which only works on the Mac. In theory, iMovie, which comes free with the Mac, is a great software to create videos, but I ended up sticking with Movie Maker, which I can run on the virtual PC environment on my Mac, really only because that's what I was accustomed to using. Anyway, the create part of the process is where you bring in all of your media, order and reorder the images, and sync the visuals with your audio. It takes a little bit to get comfortable with the software that you choose, but mostly you'll be inserting images or video, then either stretching or shortening clips to match the narrative. Either Movie Maker or iMovie will allow you to add text and transitions. Step 5. Share. Once the project is complete, I save it as a completed video file and then I share. 
the files are usually pretty large, which is what makes it difficult for me to just host them on a web page for people to download. Uploading to my YouTube channel allows me to share the resources openly with, well, pretty much the world. Hosting via YouTube presents occasional problems for schools that either don't have internet or have spotty coverage, or schools that have their internet on a tight lockdown so that YouTube isn't accessible, but for the most part, instructors and students seem to work around these issues. Now, I know that my specific method of making videos is not going to be for everyone, but remember that all digital storytelling, regardless of what tool you use and what kind of media you incorporate, comes down to the five basic steps. One, write a script. Two, storyboard your script. Three, collect your multimedia. Four, create. Five, share. 